the Rebbe of Eli Melech, with whom HaKadosh Baruch Hu feels so close, to represent us, to advocate for us, to be our lawyer. We're not here to pray to him. We're here to ask him to pray for us. But in tapping into the Koach feel the power of prayer, everyone here has something to pray for. Children, grandchildren, health, wellness, physical health, emotional health, mental health, Shiduchem, to find a mate, to have children, financial stability, prosperity, our own longevity and future, the neshamas of our loved ones, Klai Yisrael, the Jewish people. We're going to dive in in a moment. Unfortunately, we received some very sad news that Michael Burrow, who we know orchestrated the whole program, was supposed to be with us this week. His adult daughter, who, for whatever reasons, due to treatments she had in the past, her organs were shutting down one by one. She's been in a coma now for over a month, several months, and we knew he wouldn't be able to join us, and we just received word that she's no longer receiving treatment. And it's likely a matter of time, but we daven for her here in Lezhensk at the kever of the Rebbe of Elimelech, that Kodesh Baruch Hu should bestow his compassion upon her for whatever is meant to be should be done in a way that the family has strength and comfort. Sarit Sipora Bas Batya Rivka. Sarit Sipora Bas Batya Rivka. And as we all daven for her and daven for whatever else, and we want to understand the power of prayer, I want to tell you one story, and then we'll daven. A survivor told the story about himself to Rabbi Yechiel Spiro, who recorded the story. And he said the following, During the war, I always thought the most valuable commodity was money. Until I came to Siberia and worked 18 hours a day mining gold. I figured I could always smuggle a little bit in my pocket and in a short while I'd be rich. What a fool I was to think that my gold had value in Siberia where money was worthless. It wasn't gold, it was food that we needed. And besides, what good was gold if there was nothing to buy? My focus turned to food. The pangs of hunger overwhelmed me until one day a passing guard walked by smoking a cigarette and I began to crave cigarettes. But cigarettes became more and more difficult to get. Well, tobacco was not that elusive, the paper in which it needed to be wrapped was very scarce, even for the guards. So now it was no longer gold, or food, or cigarettes that were of great value. It was plain paper to wrap the tobacco. One day, an elderly peasant approached me and asked me if I knew how to read. His son was a soldier in the Soviet Union Army, and he would periodically write a letter to his father. The father could not read, so he made a deal with me. If I would read him his son's letter, he would give me the paper envelope in return. I was overjoyed. But when I looked at the envelope, I noticed there was some lettering on it. And then I noticed the lettering was Hebrew. Reading it carefully, I saw that the writing was from a sitter. It was from davening. It had been years since I had davened, but I knew what I was holding. I put the envelope in my pocket and I brought it to one of the learned men in our group. When I showed him my discovery, he excitedly agreed that this was a page from a sitter. He was thrilled. He said, Hashem had not forgotten about us. So how could we forget about him? We started a minion three times a day. A chazan stood up and read the envelope. Our one-page sitter gave us tremendous strength through prayer. We all felt like we now had hope again and that our lives had meaning and purpose. We looked forward to davening together every day. It suddenly occurred to me that I had now discovered the most valuable thing in the world. It was not gold and it was not food and it was not cigarettes or even paper. It was tefillah, it was prayer. The ability to connect with Hashem, to reach out and speak with Him, gave us hope. Without hope we had nothing, and with hope we had everything. There was another aspect of the discovery that was mind-boggling. The page of the sitter contained a message that was made specifically for us. The page of the sitter began with the words in Az Yashir, Hashem yimloch liolam va'ed, God will rule forever. And ended with the words from the tefillah of Avaraba, Avinu av harachaman, hamerachem rachem aleinu. Our Father, our compassionate Father, is merciful, have mercy on us. These precious words kept us going and gave us life and allowed us to continue until we were able to go free. It was clearly Hashem who did this for us as He showed us that He had not forgotten about His children. My friends, it's not gold, it's not food, certainly it's not cigarettes. It's something we all have access to whenever we want it. And we have the opportunity to do it here in the most special place with a loyal advocate who will represent us and take our kilos on high because He knows the judge so well. He can get into the inner chambers of the judge and deliver our message directly to him on our behalf. Take advantage of this moment. Take advantage of being here, this special opportunity. 
We all daven for Michael Burrell's daughter. We daven for our own needs. We daven for all of Klal Yisrael. Take a few moments, say Tehillim, offer your own tefillos. If you don't want to use the words of Tehillim, use your own words with the most authentic talk from your heart and pour it out to Hashem. Proceeding our prayer to ask Hashem a prayer that He accept our prayer that He's open to our prayer. The paragraph, three paragraphs from the end. It's on page forty-two in the book. A paragraph that was made famous by Avram Fried with a beautiful song. If we want HaKadosh Baruch Hu to be open to our prayers, we spoke at the OL, that you give nachas to a parent, the parent wants to bestow bracha on you. Is there a greater nachas you could give a parent than getting along with your siblings? Is there a greater nachas for a parent than to see their children be best of friends, to get along, to bond, to judge one another favorably? Perhaps, perhaps that was even the content of some people's personal prayers at the grave of the Rebbe of Elimelech, that our children should always get along. And the Rebbe Shalom, Avinu Shabbat our Father in Heaven, is no different. The greatest nachas for him is when we, his children, can all get along. And so Rebbe Elimelech and his tefillah encourages us to pray, Save us from envy and jealousy one of another. Envy shouldn't rise on our hearts, nor should others be envious of us. And now the words that Avram Fried made famous, they're in again, your source book, page 42. Adar Abba, on the contrary, let it be in our hearts that we see, each of us, the virtue of our friends, and not their chesronos, not their shortcomings. And now we speak of our fellow man on the straight good path before you. And that no, no, no anger, no hatred should ever rise one friend to another, God forbid. What an incredible tefillah to say. On the contrary, rather than jealousy, we should judge one another favorably. And that's our bracha, our tefillah, for this trip. And it's a we should be zochah to see what really comes in the after-after. The Bias Mashiach, with the arrival of Mashiach, the Kenu, the Meir of the We should be zochah to welcome Mashiach. L'chaim, l'chaim.